Hello, welcome to Wicked Wednesdays with the Water Witch. This is Anwen. Today we're going to talk about using what you have around you. So, basically, this blog, this blog is going to be um, a little bit more for the beginner um, and intermediate versus the advanced. Um, definitely someone that doesn't have a large collection of things. This is who I'm gearing this towards. So here's the deal. Witches. That is us. We work with what we know. And this has been the way it has been in the past. Uh, the village work witch would work with the energies of her garden, um, probably the forest, um, what was beyond the hedge, um, in exchange for other items, which then she would probably also use um, in her, her magic charm spells and healing. Um, Raven Gramasi says that the witches are the plant people. And I really agree with this statement. I want to say, though, that this is not going to be true for everybody because there are some people in high magic that are not plant people. And so this is not a blanket statement. It's a very truthful statement for me. Um, and for other garden, village, kitchen, hedge, witches. Um, so here's um, what I recommend. Um, when you're first starting out, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, witches are the plant people, and we work with what we know. So that those two phrases right there really indicate, go out into nature. Go gather your own items. Gather your own plants. You don't need to have this exotic plant from overseas. You don't need to have this antique blade. Um, you know, please stay away from plastics. That's a pet peeve of mine. I did have a conversation with someone once that told me they could cast a circle with a plastic knife, and that's great, but I don't think it would work for me because the whole time I would be laughing. Um, so I say stay away from plastics. Um, also, you know that when you're going out into nature and you're ritually harvesting and working with the plant spirits and the nature spirits, that what you're gathering and what you're working with is ethical, and it's been ethically harvested. Um, it's also most likely going to be pesticide-free um, here and what's local. When I first moved to Arizona, it was uh, a little difficult because I didn't know the plants here, and I was um, a little panicked because I was like, I don't know these plants, I don't understand them, I don't have a relationship with them. However, I've made a big effort into learning some of the local plants, and we have plenty of nightshades here to work with. We have creosote, which is a wonderful plant. We have um, some wormwood, mugworts up north. Um, we have uh, datura. Um, cactuses have a lot of magical power, too. Um, so lots of things that you can work with, even here in the desert. So go out into nature, grow your own things, and harvest your own things ethically. Now, um, so I started growing my roses uh, years and years ago. Um, I've always grown them. And um, there's no point, at least I believe, that there's no point in ordering roses to work with in magic because the roses that I grow are going to be much more powerful. I've created a bond with all of my rose bushes. I've tended them, planted them, watered them, harvested them, um, worked with them in magic. Um, I've drank their, um, the petals in tea and I've, you know, worked with these plants a lot. And so the magic that is going to come from, say, rose petals that I grew is going to be much stronger, at least in my opinion, than magic that came, uh, than magic with roses that came in the mail. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you don't have access to nature, it's fine. Um, what I like to do is, here's kind of my scale of how I acquire things. First, I look around. Can whatever I need, whatever my need is, can it be fulfilled with things around me? If the answer is no. Can it be fulfilled if I travel up north and um, gather from up there? Um, 
And if the answer is yes, then of course I will make a trip up north. If not, then um, what I do is I look around for local uh, witches or uh, friends in other states um, that can do an exchange. And I know that, especially if they're friends, that the items will be gathered and harvested ethically. Now, if that's not available for me either, then what I'll do is I'll go over to Etsy and I'll look on Etsy for um, other artisan witches that I am not familiar with um, that have also been ritually harvesting their items. Um, and if that's not the case, then there are companies out there like Mountain Rose Herbs that you can order from and you can know that they were, um, they're fair trade, they're organic, um, etc. So I'm a collector and so I really want to encourage you to pick up the rock that calls to you on the side of the street or the feather or the weird thing that you found that you just kind of had to have um, because what happens is after a while you have quite a large collection and if you're a plant people or a nature people or a magpie and you like to go around collecting things then you may find that you have enough to start divination by bone or magpie reading. You may find that, like I just discovered the other day, that I had collected enough feathers that were blue in color um, over the years to make a healing smudge fan. Um, and just for the record here, um, they were all, of course, ethically uh, gathered, and they're all, of course, natural. They're not dyed. So they are some exotic birds. Um, and then work with what's in your yard. If you live in an apartment, it'll be a little bit more difficult because you will have to go out into nature and spend some time, but maybe finding a spot that you always go to and work with. Now, use what's in your yard um, or what's around you for magic. Now, if you're going to be ingesting things, drinking teas, making teas, stuff like that, you need to know where they're coming from and you need to make sure that they are safe and pesticide free. So that's something to take into consideration. Um, so collect, gather, and use nature in your magic. It's very, very powerful. Um, it's very, very rewarding. And if you are a plant people slash witch like I am, I think that it's going to enhance your practice immensely. Well, the battery on my laptop is about to die, so this will sum it up for today. This is Wicked Wednesdays with the Water Witch, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.